Hey folks, welcome to the Triple T Thursday. For those just joining us, that's Tools, Tips, and Talk, where we'll discuss info for the knife maker. In today's episode, we're gonna continue our folder series. Today, we're gonna to get the mechanism working, uh, get it so it flips open and flips closed. So let's get to it. All right, so we're back at it. We're ready to drill our holes. Um, so like I said last time, we're going to be gluing these two together with some CA glue just so we can match up all the holes perfectly. Uh, what I've done is actually pick any two holes and just drew lines uh, through them and the same lines through the other liner. This just lets you um, line this up perfectly because I can just make sure I have a nice straight line here. And I think we're about there. So... That way I get my liners exactly where I want them. And now I'm just gonna use some CA glue and uh, glue them down. Don't go crazy with the CA glue. I just have one drop on either side. The next thing I'm gonna show you guys is a cool little tool I was turned on to, which is an optical center punch. Uh, I wanna center punch all of these holes so I get nice accurate holes. And the way this thing works is there's these lenses Okay, there's a couple of them, one with a dot, one with the cross here. I'll use the dot. You put this in here. You can look down through this and it gives you a magnified, super accurate uh, placement. Then you just hold down the base, pull this out, put your little point in here, and then give it a whack. So really cool tool for accurate center, center punching. So I've center punched all the holes. The only one we're not going to drill is this one right here. Uh, that is for the detent ball. We're going to drill all the other ones uh, with the sixteenth of an inch. This one's going to be a little smaller, so that's why we're not going to drill it. But all of the rest we're going to drill right through both liners and then the three in the, uh, in the blade. So I'm over at the mill and I'm ready to drill. Remember, you could do this on a drill press. I'm just going to use the, uh, the mill here because I have one. Um, the way I've got my mill set up, I have a little pin here drilled into my vise. It's a little stop pin so I can just put something up against it and I don't have to worry about something helicoptering. And the drill bit just goes here and I know my jaws are nice and flat. So I'm going to be drilling all of these holes except for this one right here which is the detent hole. And we're going to drill them all to 1 16th. And remember, these are carbide drills, so they need quite a bit more speed. I've got this set up at the max. Uh, this, the calculator would tell you this needs about 3,500 RPMs for titanium. I've got this going about 2,500, which is the max for this mill. Titanium is rather sticky, um, and you'll feel it. If you've never drilled titanium, it kind of wants to stick all of this stuff to the drill bit, so you got to remove it every once in a while. So there are holes. I didn't actually need to drill this one and this one through the other side, because this is going to be for our lock. It's fine. I just won't cut the lock on the show side, but those holes you'll never see anyway. So what I find really helpful now is to color code the holes. All the ones that I've colored in black with a marker, those need to get tapped. Okay, so that's gonna be, so these two are the holes for our front bolster, these two for the back bolster, and these two will be screwing the back bar in. So those all need to get screwed down, those will get tapped. So I've got a number 49 drill in here, and we're gonna drill those. Number 49 is what we need for titanium in order to tap it for 256. All right, let's drill through those. The other colors, the blue, is, and that's my 1 8 stop pin. So we're going to drill that and uh, ream it to 1 8 
and then this is our pivot hole. We're going to be doing that to 3 16 but let's do the black ones first. And one thing I should mention, after every series of drilling holes, you should go to the disc grinder and grind off the, um, the slag that's on the bottom. I can feel that. Even a little bit of those is going to prop up your scale a little bit that uh, it's going to change your hole. So you need to make sure after every drill you go to, not every hole, but every session, you go back and you remove all of this. I can feel it. Now it's going to be about a thousandth. Now we're going to be drilling the stop pin, okay, right here. Okay, so that's going to be a number 32 drill. And then we're going to drill it with a one eighth reamer because we need this one to be super accurate. We want no play in this. So these are just going to be the endpoints of the channel. Uh, these don't need to be accurate, so we're just going to drill them with a 1 8 inch drill. You can see the slag on this side. We've got to go remove that with the disc grinder. Okay, we're ready to do our pivot hole. I've got a number 17 here. I'm going to be drilling through that 1 8 that I just drilled, and then we're going to use a, one, a 3 16 reamer. So before we separate anything, so before we separate the liners, we're going to mentally go through and make sure we've done all of our holes. For the pivot hole, I'm going to take my 3 16 dowel pin and just place it inside. It should go in smooth and there should be no play, okay? which there isn't. It's really good. And I'll do the same for the blade. Yeah, that fits really nice and snug. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing for the 1 8 um, stop pin just to check it. And sometimes they'll it'll even be kind of difficult for it to go in, which is fine. I'm going to break apart the liners now. Uh, some of you may think, hey, why don't you just tap those holes first? I've actually broken a tap trying to go through both. It's just easier doing them separately. To separate your layers, I just hold them with some pliers and then take a torch, heat it up, and it'll break apart the uh, CA glue. Now, I'll usually dip them to cool them, and you will need to take some acetone and remove all of that CA glue. You can see I was a little off when I glued these together, but that doesn't matter at all um, because we're going to just line these up and then we're going to grind the edges. That's why I warned you not to grind right to your line uh, on this liner. So right now uh, I'm going to, I can feel these just between the layers, these popped up a bit. So I'm going to take all of these to the disc grinder, clean them all off, and then I'm actually going to mark these with uh, a little engraver. Um, I happen to have an engraver. You can do this with marker, but it'll keep coming off every time you use the grinder. So it's a good idea to take a little Dremel or something like that and write on these outside lock, inside lock, on the other side, inside show, outside show uh, on these liners. It will help you immensely because every time you pick them up, you're going to get confused which side is which. So uh, I'm going to just do that with my uh, rotary tool. Now it's time to talk about the little channel we're going to do in the knife for our stop pin. Uh, the way we're going to do this is have a block here. So I have just, this is just a block of steel. I've drilled and reamed a 3 16 inch hole. That's going to be for a dowel pin. 
Okay, and once you make one of these, you can just keep it. And we're going to put our knife on there. Okay, you might have to shorten the pin so you don't hit it with your drill. Um, move it so you can see. So what we're going to do is basically turn the knife. Well, first, we're going to lock this in a drill vise and then screw down or bolt down that drill vise to your, to your drill table. You don't want this to move at all. And you're going to spot the drill right on top of that hole. Okay? And once it's spotted on that hole, then we're just going to drill holes all the way around until we meet the other one. Then what you're going to do, and this is a bit dicey with a drill press, but that's why we pre-drilled all the holes. Having it completely in place, we're going to put a 530 seconds end mill and you're just going to rotate this just to make a nice channel, okay? It's not great for your drill press, uh, so I take no responsibility in you messing up your drill press, but you're not going to do that much um, damage. Dr end mills, uh, you really need to call it, so you're going to be doing this in a Jacobs chuck. Ideally, you have a mill that you can do side pressure, but you're not going to be doing a ton of pressure on this one, so it's probably fine. I'm going to be doing this in the mill, and I'm just going to lock this in my vise, and I'm going to do the same thing. So we've got our channel milled in. I've just put some of the dowel pins in here um, and now I'm just seeing how it works. You'll notice that it stops short. Okay, That's because we put those short on purpose and then we put it out. It doesn't open all the way. So what you want to do is make sure you leave that piece of steel uh, that we used to mill this channel set up exactly the same. Don't remove it, just keep it exactly the same because now we're just going to go over and in little increments we're just going to bump up against the end mill and just push this and keep coming back and testing it until we get it exactly where we want it because we need to go probably an eighth of an inch um, this way so it's probably only a tiny little bit over here. So we're going to keep doing that back and forth until we get this placed exactly where we want in the open and closed position. Okay, so I've gone and trimmed this up. It opens pretty close and uh, it goes a little bit further than I wanted but because um, I screwed up a little bit but I'll just trim the blade back just about a sixteenth and uh, it should be fine. Alright, so now the last thing we're going to do today is do our back bar because then we can actually set it up and the knife and the, the uh, liners should fit together. So for the back bar, I'm just going to be using this piece of carbon fiber. Um, what we're going to do is put it on here. Okay, Leave lots of extra. We can always grind it down. We're going to put it on there. Then we're going to CA glue it. Okay, Then we're going to drill through our holes again from the other side. And uh, that will give us exactly the same imprint, and then we'll just bust that off. Okay, we got that glued up. Now we're just going to drill through these holes. Remember, these are 16th of an inch, and these are number 49s. So you can pop this off usually with just a little bit of pressure. If uh, that doesn't work, just take a razor blade and uh, keep sliding it down and eventually it'll just pop off. Uh, same as before, we're going to take off the glue with some acetone. Uh, then we're going to put this back in and just trim it up a little bit. And I realized I didn't actually mention uh, the thickness of this uh, backer bar. Uh, it really needs to be the thickness of your blade plus the washers that we're going to be using on either side. Since um, we still have to heat treat this, as long as this is thicker than this, 
uh, plus the uh, washers right now, that's fine. We're going to trim this up after we heat treat this and we do final grinding on the blade. So as long as it's pretty close, I and mean, you can tell it's a little bit bigger here, which is just fine. So now we're going to put this in, put the blade in, and then we'll do some drawing on where we want this to uh, meet up. This is where we're going to use our little 1 16th uh, lineup pins. So now we're just going to take the uh, the knife and just push it against the, the closed position. And that's where we're going to grind our back bar to. So we've got our basic mechanism together. It closes, it opens, it stops where we want it to stop. So that will wrap up this week's episode. In next week's episode, we're going to cut the lock, okay? Cut that lock mechanism. We will start to um, actually talk about the pieces you need for the folders, the washers, the pivot pins, the, the little screws. We'll cover all of that, and then we're going to tap all of those holes for um, we need to actually screw in our back bar, and uh, our bolsters and things like that. Thanks, folks. We'll see you on the next one.